out of the tens of thousands of podcasts out there, you have found yourself tuned into another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the show that talks to musicians about their dogs and how these canine companions are an invaluable asset to our everyday lives. I'm your host, Tim Dill. Alongside me is my dog and inspiration for the show, Charlie. And today we are excited to bring you our talk with Matt Byrne, the punishing drummer of the impenetrable heavy metal hardcore factory that is Hatebreed who will be celebrating their 30-year anniversary as a band in 2024. And these are Matt's pasta-themed Rocker Dogs. I have two, actually. I have two Rocker Dogs. Uh, One has been with me for going on five years now. And, or, yeah, five years now, going on six. And then the other, I just recently got... uh, September 26th. Oh, great. great. So yeah, two rocker dogs. The The one who's been with me for a while, his name is ZD. And the new guy, his name is Ravioli. <laughs> In keeping with the theme. Yeah. Pasta and his, dogs. It, and ZD, I'm sorry, yeah. ZD is a Shih Tzu, correct? They're both Shih Tzus. I love okay. the Shih Tzu breed. Uh, I had one growing up. Uh, actually, my first dog I ever had was a Siberian Husky. Oh, wow. And his name, I was super little. My, my parents got him when he was a baby and he grew up to be this huge horse of a dog. You know, when you're a little <laughs> kid, I was riding him around like a horse. His name was Chair, spelled like Cher, the singer. Okay. But Chair, pronounced Chair, and it was short for Chernyavka, which apparently my father named him that. He took a little bit of Russian in high school, so he was on a Russian kick. Right. And uh, Chernyavka, apparently that that means a great warrior or something like that. Something. Oh, that's long awesome. That's so awesome. Cher was my first dog. He was a he was a big Siberian. After he passed away, a couple years later, we rescued a Shih Tzu, and and that was it. I was off to the races with the Shih Tzu breed. It was the cutest dog I'd ever seen. The best temperament, I, uh, the best temperament of a dog I ever clicked with. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, when I had the opportunity, had a little time to get my own dogs, I said, I'm getting, I'm sticking with the Shih Tzu breed. Okay. Now was, is ZD relatively, you know, he's, he, he's been with you for five years. Um, yeah. Did you guys have dogs before that in your family as a, as an adult? As an adult? No, no, this okay. was uh, because of being in the band and traveling so much. And uh, I was living on my own. I just didn't have anyone to take care of them. I felt guilty about getting a dog and then leaving for three months at a time. So um, it wasn't until a bunch of years back, uh, you know, I was married, was, right. it was divorced, but right. I kept the dog. Uh, yeah, it was, I was married and, um, you know, we had the opportunity to get a dog and uh, it was the better scenario. So mm-hmm. someone would be here and he, he had his home and everything and wasn't getting shuffled around and whatnot. So, and that's still, even though I'm traveling a lot still, uh, I just, I figured it out. Right. He's, he's surrounded by some great people that take care of him when I'm away. So it works out good. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit more about that. Who does take care of it? Is it a relative? Is it a friend? Is it a service? I have links to all those things, right. but uh, in case, so there's backup plans for the backup plans uh, just in case something falls through. But usually it's my parents. They live not too far from me. They're the, they're the dog grandparents. So right. it's like ZD's second home and now Ravioli's second home. So they take care of him. He falls right in line with them. You know, they're older. They're, they, they're in and out of the house. But, you know, the, you know how old people are. They're very routine. Yep. And um, he falls right in with that. And then if uh, they're busy or whatever, uh, my sister watches them. My sister's a dog person. She had a little Yorkie. For a long time, he passed away, but her husband, uh, when they got together, he has a midsize uh, mutt, mm-hmm. and he's an older dog. He's 15 years old. His name is Awesome. <laughs> uh, so that's their boy. So was Edie, you know, they're like Mutt and Jeff, you know, the little, yeah. little guy, big guy, and uh, they hang out. So, and my sister treats the dog like it's her own. So I'm always, you know, he knows how to FaceTime and everything like that. ZD knows how to FaceTime. So I call him from the road and everything. He just looks at me while I talk like an idiot to him. And of course, like we all do. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, she basically like tries to steal him while I'm away. I'm like, you got to back off. You're treating him <laughs> too good. He's not going to know who I am. 
<laughs> so ZD, I take it, is very easy going with other dogs. Is he very receptible to most dogs, or does, do you have to kind of take the time to test him out? It's Yeah, he's good. He's he's a small little runt, as Shih Tzus are. They're small dogs. So when he first meets a dog, he does a lot of positioning. He's got to try to establish himself as the alpha. So there's a lot of like chest bumping and, (laughs) you know, he's putting himself up on, on the other dog and just kind of make himself seem bigger than he is. And yeah, that goes on until the other dog checks him a little bit and then they're buddies. (laughs) Well, I get most of my information from social media because if I go to Wikipedia, it's not going to tell me all about your dog. So I've seen through pictures and stuff and through posts and I, did know it's a post back in, I think it was 2013, and you said it's around Halloween, which we're at right now, two weeks before Halloween, although this will air closer to Thanksgiving, but you said it's around Halloween when I wish I had the dog the most. Not that they need to be any more entertaining, but it's so fun to dress them up. So I was curious, are the two dogs going to go as anything in particular this Halloween? Yeah, I don't know what yet. I'm trying to come up with the best buddy scenario, right. you know, where both of them would make both costumes would make sense. Yeah. Um, and I haven't come up with anything great yet. So I haven't pulled the trigger on anything. Uh, I've watched plenty of TikTok videos and, and, you know, the YouTube shorts where that <laughs> particular breed, you know, people like put them in the costumes where they have a front part yeah. of the costume where it's like, you know, Chucky or something like yeah. that. And the dog's running and there's the knife and everything. <laughs> So I thought about something like that. I have an, a costume that I had for him a, a bunch of years ago that was a spider. So it's this thing that goes on his back and there's all these legs and everything. And that's pretty cool. But he ends yeah. up just ripping it off and chewing on the legs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm still trying. I'm still in the thinking part. I, I have to get uh, get on to a good idea that that would make sense for the two of them. Let me give you one. I'm going I'm spitballing here, but I'm thinking music. So is there like a Simon and Garfunkel or, uh, you know, who are these who are these famous duos that are maybe more uh, visually present themselves? Simon and Cher or uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sonny and Cher, Sonny and Cher. <laughs> yeah, get the long uh, yeah there's plenty, I guess. <laughs> You're funny. Now, what was the, you know, why ravioli? What made you bring in another dog? Uh, the story behind it is is pretty cool, actually. Uh, we were just on tour in the U.S. Hatebreed was out in the U.S. in September. So um, my bass player, Chris, his girlfriend owns a liquor store in Connecticut. And uh, there was a guy hanging around the store, would always come in. He had this dog. Didn't look like the dog was very well taken care of. He'd leave the dog at the store and and disappear for a couple hours and come back. And uh, ultimately, he ended up giving up the dog to Melanie. Mm -hmm. And uh, she knew someone who was involved with animal rescue. So she already has dogs. She said, I can't keep the dog. I'm going to give it to this person. This person will find a good home for it. Chris was relating the story to me and he's like, yeah, check it out. He showed me a picture of the dog and I just immediately said, I'll take him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll take him. I'm into it. I, I love the breed. And I just, I don't know. I very seldom do I do something impulse like that. Right. Uh, when, you know, was thinking about getting ZD. It was very thought out and okay, what size is the house? You know, I don't want a big dog. I like little dogs anyway. So, you know, I, I just thought everything out and make sure everything makes sense for the lifestyle and everything. Um, yeah. I just said, no, I'll take him. I'll figure it out. He's mine. And so, uh, yeah, he looked into it and, and sure enough, the person said, okay, great. So uh, yeah, if you want some, so we got off the road and I, I drove right out to Connecticut and scooped him up, brought him to my groomer and brought him to the vet and everything. And they checked him over and everything was good. And and that was it. Here we are. So awesome. uh, I didn't, it wasn't a plan. <laughs> I just, uh, it was a just total impulse thing and I'm glad I did it. Yeah. And the two of them hit it off right away or did they need a little bit of uh, a warming up period? Uh, no, they pretty much hit it off. Uh, same thing. Like I said, ZD, he was kind of, he does his positioning. So it's a lot of, Hey, who are you? You know, this is my house. Yeah. A lot of chest yeah. bumping and, and, um, uh, and, and whatnot, but, uh, it didn't last too long. I think they just started following each other around and chasing each other around and they do a lot of wrestling. I mean, I, I think I've timed it out 25 minutes straight. They're just going at it and running back and forth and growling and, then they're tired out and they lay down yeah. and go to sleep and that's it. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. It's funny. I, I went to the American Kennel Club just to get some information on the breed. And they said uh, they were bred to be house companions and require minimal exercise. So I'm impressed that they can actually go at it for you know close to a half an hour. 
I oh, mean, there he is. Which one's that? This is ZD. Okay. ZD's 13 pounds. He's kind of a runty little thing. He's smaller than ravioli. Ravioli, I, I thought ravioli at first was a mix, a Shih Tzu mix, but the vet said no. He's pretty much purebred, but he's about five to six pounds heavier than ZD, and he's taller and longer. Okay. Did they have an yeah, approximate three, age for him? For uh, five years old. Uh, ravioli well, five, okay. roughly five. Yeah, ravioli's oh. five and ZD six, roughly. Okay. He was a, he was a ZD was a rescue from the uh, Dutchess County SPCA here. Good story, uh, funny story about him. Uh, like I was saying, I was you know I wanted to get a dog. Me and my wife at the time we wanted a dog. So uh, this area, Poughkeepsie area, you know a lot of pit bulls and mutts and pit bull mixes and stuff like that. So uh, I had actually called a couple of breeders, which mm -hmm. I didn't really want to get involved with. I, I, I was looking to rescue, you know, yeah. um, but uh, no one was calling me back. It was funny. I couldn't get anybody on the phone. Uh, no one would hit me back. And, and so I said, you know, one day I said, I'm going to take a ride up to the Dutchess County SPCA and see what they got. Maybe they have a smaller dog or, or something. I didn't expect much. I walked in there at like four o'clock in the afternoon. They close at five. Manager was there. I explained everything. And he said, well, it's funny, you know, um, we just did a deal with a, a rescue down in Georgia, in the Atlanta yeah. area. A um, lot of stray dogs down south and everything. So they just trucked up a truckload of dogs up here. We just got them in. So, uh, and there's two dogs that came in. So you want to have a look? I said, yeah, why not? So he brought me in the back and the cages and the rooms and everything. And, and there was this one little dog. He was a Chihuahua mix. I think his name was Paco, if I remember correctly. And he was a wiry little thing and he was barking his face off. Oh my goodness. And I said, well, he's cute, you know, but I'm looking for, for something a little more like fluffy, not so much hairy and wiry. Right. And plus he's barking like crazy. So he said, yeah, well, I got this other dog and he brought me over to the janitor's closet. And he said, I got a guy in here. We don't even have a room for him yet. And he opened it up and it was ZD and he had his cone on. He had just been fixed. He was in a cage uh, on the floor of the janitor's closet. Right. We, we still haven't even checked him over. And uh, he started wagging his tail. He came up to the side of the cage and, and started licking my hand. I said, OK, man, this dog is mine. Do not let anybody <laughs> see this dog. You're closing soon. Do what you got to do. Feed him. Give him all his shots. Make sure he's all good. I'll be back here as soon as you guys open. Give me the paperwork. I'll fill it out right now. That's it. Done deal. Boom. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because you never see dogs like this around this area as far as rescues go. Yeah. 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 Um, so I scooped them right up and, and and we were off to the races. But yeah, the Shih Tzu breed, it's uh yeah, I think the nickname for the for the breed is the lion dog, because they do have yeah. like that, that type of feature where they just kind of lay like a lion in the grass and, and the facial expressions and stuff. And just I, I always say jokingly, like they're a totally useless breed. They're just great <laughs> for companionship. They're not supposed right. to hunt or gather or trap or do any of the stuff uh that's game oriented. They're just there to hang out with you that's yeah. it which is great which is great <laughs> which is great now, do you train is has there been any training involved because another note i got was training can be amusing and frustrating because they charm their owner into getting their way very true absolutely 100 <laughs> percent true i read a quote once about the breed i want to say it was mark twain but it was something somebody along those lines it wasn't him where the they summed up the breed perfectly saying like they're a little bit toddler, a little bit grumpy old man, a little bit cuddly dog, loving dog, and a little bit just a pain in the butt. You right. know, they, and it totally sums it up because, yeah, they are very stubborn. The breed is very stubborn. They just, they'll just sit there and look at you. If they don't want to do something, they don't. You really have to kind of coax them into it. But there is no coaxing because you just look at them and you fall in love and then you end up doing yeah. whatever the dog wants to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because ZD and Ravioli, uh, both being rescues, I, I don't know the exact background of where they were hanging out or what they went through every day before I had them, but they seem to come preloaded with some training. Okay, um, that's nice. It's nice. Yeah, they they uh, you just look at them and, and if you have a treat or something and you look at them and they automatically sit. Oh, I said the treat word. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough word to say around my house. <laughs> Come on, let's go. He's a uh, he's a grumbler too. He's very vocal. I, I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> How did you land on the name and the theme? Uh, 
I guess I'm a pasta fan. I get, I think I'm I'm a, a food name for dogs fan. I just gravitate towards that. I I was throwing around uh, other names that were, were food or drink oriented and landed on ZD. I just thought it, I sat had to have him for a day or two and, it, and the name just fit him. I had it in my head. I knew I wanted to name him that. And I just wanted to make sure that it jived with his personality and it did completely. And uh, same with ravioli. Ravioli was originally, his, his name was originally Benny. Right. And um, he's still learning ravioli or Ravi. I call him for short, but I was, you know, I threw other names around like Pepsi, um, uh what was another one you can get an endorsement deal for these dogs right right risotto like rizzy yeah that's cute um so um and wayne my guitar player he, he actually came up with a good one that went right over my head I, I i don't know how i missed it but he said you should call him vino because then you got ziti and vino it's a full you know pasta and wine just like the italian game. yeah that would have <laughs> been cute does does ziti have any nicknames oh, i know he has nicknames what are his nicknames Oh, he's got a million of them. The biggest one would be the Zeet Man. Shortening <laughs> Zeet, he just, where's, where's the Zeet? Where's the Zeet Man? Okay. I uh, saw probably uh, a million other ones that I'm not going to say because people will think I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to draw out. I, it's, it's funny. I'm going to get to like, if it's the dog on brand, it's the dog on brand for the drummer for Hate Breed. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, and quickly too, I don't like to get into the drama of this, but it's it's something that's popped up again a couple of times on this podcast, which, which I never imagined when I started it. But it's the separation or the divorce or you know a breakup with a dog involved. Was there any uh, drama over it, or was it kind of cut and clear to who the dog you know either belongs to or likes or prefers or you know how did that play out? Um, at first, there were discussions, and it, it could have gotten a little hairy. But um, as we, as just time went on, it was evident that I was going to keep the dog that he looked at me as his person. Mm -hmm. I had, I guess, the better bond with him and um, didn't want to take him out of his house that he knows. Yeah. You know, because my ex moved away. So she's not in the state anymore. She went away, totally different setting and scenario and everything. So, yeah, I think it was just, it was evident that he was mine and he wasn't yeah. going to go anywhere. Okay. Um, and that was it. Once that was established, it was fine. You know, it wasn't a knockdown, drag out fight or anything like that. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, good. Good to hear. Because, you know, a dog, it's just like, a, we don't we don't have any children. I don't have any children, but the dogs are the children. So yeah. they're the same thing. It's, it's the same type of talking and the same process and everything like that. You know, yeah. you, you have to, you have to really figure it out. Yeah. I had an artist that was sharing a dog between a girlfriend. This wasn't even, you know, legal, you know, legalized marriage between New York and Nashville. But they had long, you know, like I wow. forget it was like three month stays. But I was like, man, that's a that's a tough drive, especially uh yeah, you know, four or five times a year. Yeah, um, I couldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the other things I noticed on your social feed was I'll call his adventures. I noticed that he's he's been on an airplane. You've took him flying. Is he good on a plane? Oh yeah, he's great on a plane. Uh I have one of those Sherpa carrier bag things. Yep. So it's mesh around the side so he can see. It's not like he's completely closed off and the top unzips. So you unzip it enough where he can just pop his head out and um he goes under the seat for takeoff. Those are the rules. But uh, after that, you know, he'll sit on the lap. I'm going to take him out of the bag and just unzip the top. He pops his hat out and he's fine. He doesn't He doesn't bark. This dog does not bark. That's Ravioli good. barks a little bit more when he gets hyped up if he sees a squirrel or something. But ZD, if ZD's barking, it's a major emergency. Something's going on. <laughs> Has that ever been the case? No, <laughs> thankfully. Okay. The, the only – an emergency to him is um, – <laughs> You know, it's a sliding glass door. He's on one side. I'm on the other. Oh, my God. I can't have this. I'm going crazy now. I'm yeah. crying. I'm barking. I'm nuts. So I have to, you know, reconnect with him. He just does not like to be separated. Okay. Um, yeah, he's really good in the car. He, uh, I have a, a truck. So I put him in and he's got a system. He put him up on the driver's seat and he immediately just... Uh, jumps up on the center console and he sits there like a statue facing forward while I'm driving. He's the co-pilot. That's awesome. Uh, or I have this little like donut shaped bed. I'll, I'll keep on the front seat after a while. He'll just jump down into that and, and go to sleep. Uh, you know, he's very, uh, 
he's very chill. He's very calm on a plane or uh, even, even on a boat. My buddy's got a boat. I got, I got ZD this little life preserver. It's a neon green life preserver that straps around him. And uh, my buddy's got a pontoon boat. So plenty of room to walk around and stuff. And he'll just jump up on the couch and he lays there on a towel. This dog's done everything. He's done more than most people. He's been to, I don't know, four or five different states in, in America and yeah, planes. Um, I don't think he's been on a train yet. I'll have to remedy that. Take him down to the city or something. <laughs> Take him to the city. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I also noticed he's been camping and hiking. How is he with the great outdoors? Yeah, he's, uh, he, he doesn't. Does, does this he, lion come out? Yeah. The same thing with that cackling cry that he does. If he, he there's something he, or somewhere he wants to be and he can't get there. Um yeah, I don't, you know, he's, he's got all the alarms that all the other dogs have. If he sees a squirrel or a bird or something, he, he'll growl a little, a little bit. Um, but he's not, he doesn't take off. Mm-hmm. He's, he, he won't do that. He stays around me. Always yeah. got to be in my, my vicinity, which is good. But yeah, he did really well. He slept in a tent. He, uh, I'm vigilant, uh, vigilant with the walks, you know, three, four times a day, especially if you're in the outdoors. Like, okay, let's go wander over here make sure he gets all the smells in you know stimulate his brain by by getting into whatever he can that's safe and just picking up all the different scents and everything like that yeah now uh, circling back to this is the dog on brand you know i recently posted something it's kind of an ongoing theme of the show that the harder the rocker the softer the spot they have for the dog you know i've had a couple i've had uh jay weinberg of slipknot and he's got two small you know, dog. Yeah. So it's just funny, the contrast. So I always am approaching it like, is the dog on brand? And I, I found a quote when someone asked you about hate breed music. I think this is in the uh, Poughkeepsie Gazette. You described it as loud, fast, aggressive, and angry. So can you, that sums it can up. you take, is that, does that fit the dog? Absolutely not. The dog, these two dogs are the polar opposite of that. <laughs> Unless they're wrestling around with each other. No, I, yeah, I'm I'm the guy who, uh, I mean, I, I'm the guy who has a 13-pound fluffy little dog who has the cutest face. He looks like a teddy bear or an Ewok or something. Yeah, I have a soft spot for those dogs. I'm not a, a pit bull guy or not that I have anything against the breed or anything yeah. like that or, or uh, just bigger dogs in general. I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm a small dog guy. So yeah, I'm that like guy that's holding his dog like a little baby and everything, you know. <laughs> now, do they offer you any emotional support? You know, this is an ongoing kind of cliche that there's these emotional support dogs, but I also know in the context of this show is being a musician, a professional musician is not an easy thing. I mean, people from the outside looking in think it's like, oh, it's all, you know, airplanes and groupies, but it's a it's a grind, you know, it's a full-time blue-collar job. You know, do you ever, you know, lean on these dogs to kind of keep your sanity? Absolutely. Well, even outside of music, just everyday life. Yeah. I don't have them registered as a emotional support dog or service dog or anything like that, but they definitely are my buds. You know, I care about them enough to call them on FaceTime when I'm on the road. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but for the FaceTime thing, he absolutely understands it. He knows the sound of the dial tone, you know, that yep. <laughs> it's yeah. ringing. That's awesome. Um, if I was to call someone right now, he would, and it was ringing, he would run over and jump on my lap and he just kind of sits and waits for the thing to connect. That's awesome. So it's really interesting. Yeah. So um, it's cool to have that connection with him when I am traveling. Like, oh, I can, it's funny to say, I can actually call my dog on FaceTime and say hi. And he, 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 he understands it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm jealous. I'm jealous about that. All right, well, I wind down the show with what I call the Zoomies, and that's the last five questions that everybody gets, every guest. The first question is, do you, Matt Byrne, drummer of Hatebreed, kiss your dogs on the mouth? No. Okay. Is there a philosophy behind that? Like, is it a Uh, germ thing or just you don't go there? uh, Yeah, I just don't go there. I don't know why. Um, I'm like uh, kiss on the top of the head, kiss on the ears guy. Okay. I don't mind. They lick my face and everything, but I'm yeah. not yeah. kissing. You don't back. go in yeah, for no, it. I just, I never did that. I don't know. Here's okay. This. Question two is if your dogs had a theme song, what would it be? If they had walk up music to the plate, what would each of them have? Oh my God. That's a tough one. Probably something with a lot of horns 
upbeat drum tempo and a lot of kooky horns and just cartoon music. Okay. <laughs> Crazy cartoon music. Okay. Question three. I know the dogs do not tour with Hate Breed, but say they did, what would they insist be on their tour rider? Greenies. Big yep. thing in this house. Greenies. One a day. Keeps the teeth healthy. Keeps the breath smelling good. Um, <laughs> they really like, uh, ZD really likes peanuts, planters, peanuts, the dry roasted. Oh, wow. So he, he'll, I know shred. they love peanut, but I never heard people giving them the, the actual peanut. But yeah. The sense. actual you peanut. Get the, you, get, you get the crunch out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is always I didn't, funny. I don't know a lot of dogs that actually like peanuts, um, but he, he'll scarf them right up. So I limit them to like, used to be three. And when I'm giving him the third one, I say last one and he knows, okay, I'm done. But you know, I spoil him a little bit, <laughs> give him a couple more. Um, last thing probably be, um, they're not those pepperoni things, but they're a version of like a beef jerky sausage type thing. Right. They love them. It's their treat that they get throughout the day and pull off a little piece and feed it to them and they scarf it down. Uh, I think the current flavor is salmon and sweet potato or something like that. Right. Some weird combination. Those are a must. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, question four is, do you speak to them in a dog voice? Do you have a high pitched baby voice or a cutesy voice? Oh God. Yeah. I have the craziest voice. I've been told it's a mix between middle Eastern and German and high pitched <laughs> cartoon. I don't know where I came up with it. I'm not going to replicate it now, but it's the most ridiculous thing ever. And, uh, I can feel myself being embarrassed just talking about it, but <laughs> okay. we all have, we all have our ways that we talk to our dogs. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love I like the sound of it. Do you, uh, the same on the same, line of questioning do you ever give them a voice like if you were to personify ziti or ravioli do you ever give them like how they would sound yeah a little bit yeah and i won't put you through the embarrassment but can you describe it in any way are they a spicoli or are they you know a, a, a schwarzenegger or <laughs> uh no probably an more italian like, <laughs> it's probably more uh there's a lisp involved in there and just like a. a kind of like droopy cartoony type of voice okay <laughs> that's okay. the best i, I could describe okay. it oh, we'll, we'll take it i wish we could draw it out of you but i <laughs> completely understand and this goes back oh. to the the hate breed, breed brand I, I don't think uh i don't think the fans <laughs> there's not enough it. not enough money in the world to get me to do that <laughs> And last but not least, question five, is there a dog organization or service that you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, there's two actually, uh, Dutchess County SPCA, great organization here uh, up in Poughkeepsie, Hyde Park area. It's where I got ZD. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally back them. They revamped their facilities. The facility up there is huge and uh, it's, I don't even think it's five years old now. They, they have um, one side for cats and other animals and then another side for dogs. Uh, they take all sorts of donations, blankets, clothing, food, toys, all that stuff for all the animals. So they do a really good job up there. And then yep. another one is um, a local dog groomer here that I use. She's great. Her name is Kate. The place is called Shampooches. <laughs> it's an amazing uh, doggy day spa. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I have the note here and I was happy that you brought it up because it's such a funny, <laughs> I, it, every, every, business like that usually has a great name. Shampooches is, is a great name. Shampooches. It's a great spot. I think it was a salon at some point. She took it over. So you walk in the waiting room and it's decked out in a way that it's very welcoming for the pets. And there's the door in the back, you know, all, all these things happen behind the closed door. It's the glass door that frosted glass and it actually says spa on it. They saved it from the salon. It's perfect. And yeah, shampooches, they do a great job there. Shout out to Kate and Sydney. They're the, Kate's the owner and Sydney's one of the groomers there and they do a great job. Awesome. Awesome. We'll, we'll tag them on our socials uh, when this comes out and hopefully give them, show them a little love. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for taking the time and, you know, introducing me to your, your, your Italian themed dogs, Ziti and Ravioli. <laughs> it's, it's always a pleasure to get to know these dogs for me after seeing them on social media. So uh, it's been fun. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having me. This is different. As soon as it was brought up to me to do this, I just like the, you know, the impulse thing of getting ravioli. I was like, yes, have to do it. Have to do this podcast. Have to talk about this stuff. It's, it's great. Fantastic. Great I love time. to hear that. Love to hear that. It was a pleasure. Thank you.